Howdy, AP Freakout, it is Miss Kosh, and I uh, was just realizing I didn't make a video for Mr. Passwater's 1.5 notes. Um, so, we've already covered this in my class, but I thought I'd, I'd add this to the repertoire. Okay, so when we talk about um, zeros of a polynomial function, um, if, it, if x minus a is a factor, then x equals a is a zero. Um, so, a, yeah, anyway, it's a zero, it's a root, it's an x-intercept. Um, well, it's an x-intercept assuming it's a real zero. So, like, I might have something like, um, this is just a little side note. If I have f of x is equal to x squared plus 4, if I set that equal to zero, I'm going to get x squared equals negative 4, and then I take the square root, square root, plus minus, and I get x is equal to plus or minus 2i. Um, and you may know that this is a parabola that's been scooted up four units. Okay, so it has two zeros, but they are non-real zeros. Um, so we can call them zeros, we can call them, um, uh, what else do we call them, roots, but we wouldn't call it an x-intercept because these aren't real and they don't touch the x-axis. Okay, I don't know why I went that direction, but there we go. Okay, we talk about multiplicity. Um, if a linear factor is repeated in times, then the corresponding zero has a multiplicity of n. Okay, so we look at this like this one has negative 1, has a multiplicity of 3. Uh, positive 3 has a multiplicity of 2. So right here, when it has a multiplicity, um, I, these, we have new paper at school, and it's too thin, and it's kind of annoying. Okay, so um, <laughs> first world problems. Okay, um, so this graph right here, it has these three zeros. Um, so it had um, negative 4 is a 0 here. It's just passing through. Um, negative 3 has a multiplicity of 3, and I see a bend, or I think the Algebra 2 teachers at my school called this a wiggle. Notice it's changing concavity here, so this is also an inflection point. Um, and then we have at 3, we have a bounce. So um, it had a, a, this is an even multiplicity, so if it's an even multiplicity, it bounces. If it's an odd multiplicity greater than 1, it bends or wiggles. If it's a multiplicity of 1, it just passes through. Um, let's see, the multiplicity of a zero is the blank of its factor. Exponent? Power? Something like that. Uh, we can include the multiplicity. Okay, so let's say here, this one has a multiplicity of three. So notice on this one, he didn't write that it had a multiplicity of one. It was kind of implied. So if you don't tell me the multiplicity, I would assume one. Um, okay. Um, the graph of, it will bounce off the x-axis. The graph of polynomial polynomial will always be tangent to the x-axis any, at any zero with an even multiplicity. Okay, that's cool. Okay, um, so I have a zero at x equals zero from this first part, and it's got a multiplicity of three. I have a zero at negative one. It has a multiplicity of one. I have a zero at four. It has a multiplicity of two. Um, the degree of the polynomial, three, four, five, six, um, so we have, if I foiled everything out, the largest degree you would see is x to the 6. I see that there's 3 here, 2 that would come from here, and one more there. 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6. Um, determine the degree of the polynomial. Done. Find all real zeros and state the multiplicity. Okay. This one, this would be degree 4 here, degree, and two more. This is degree 6. Um, it has, oh, check this out. This is 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 2, but notice there's, Two more, or four more of those, so this would be to the fifth power. So, okay, that's clever. Um, maybe I can help you see a little bit better. Um, so we had a zero at x equals negative two, has a multiplicity of one. We have a zero at x equals two. This has a multiplicity of five. All right, degree, what did we say? We said degree six. On this one, I have cubic and then a, and a quadratic. If I multiplied everybody out, I'd have degree five on this one. Um, Let's see, we need to factor out an x. That gives us x squared minus x minus six. Um, this will factor in a second. I can do it now. x minus four times x minus three. This becomes an x times, this becomes an x minus three times an x plus two. We still have an x minus four, but we had one, you know what? I'm just gonna put a little squared on this term um, because I'm too lazy to write it a second time. I mean, efficient. Okay, so x equals zero, it has a multiplicity of one x equals 3 has a multiplicity of 2. Mult I, there's my t. Okay, multiplicity of 2. I have x equals, well, I started to write the negative 2. x equals negative 2 has a multiplicity of 1. x equals 4 has a multiplicity of 1. Those are fun.
Okay, complex roots. Some polynomials will have roots that contain an imaginary number. This means you will not see them on the graph. Um, uh, and this is just about what I was talking about here. Huh, fascinating. Okay, um, super. That seems kind of straightforward to me. If this was just x squared plus one, scoot it up one, so we can set this equal to zero. We subtract square root, square root, plus minus. Um, there we go. Okay, the key understanding, imaginary roots come in um, pairs. Well, okay, I like to make the caveat, um, and they're, they're conjugate pairs. They come in conjugate pairs assuming that your coefficients are real or rational. Okay, so like if I have... If I just tell you I have zeros, um, x equals 2 and x equals i, okay? It, and if I tell you that, then we know that x minus 2 times x minus i, I can foil this out. It's gross. x squared, um, this becomes a minus 2x, this becomes a minus ix, and this becomes a um, plus 2i. So if we were to write this, I'd have, okay, the x squared coefficient would be, a, here's a 1 that I don't need to write. And then I can say um, negative, um, well, I can say plus negative 2 minus i times x, and then plus 2i. So this is a non-real coefficient, and this is a non-real coefficient, which we don't really study in AP Precal. Okay, because we don't really study that, that's what makes um, people confident to say, oh, they have to come in pairs. Well, they don't have to come in pairs, but in our course they do, because we will always have... Um, coefficients here are so this had a coefficient of one this had a coefficient of negative two minus i that's annoying and we had a coefficient here of two i um it if they come in um if their coefficients are real and typically not only are our our, our coefficients real they're going to be rational um it was so it would travel with this buddy so this would come with its conjugate um, and when i do that i end up getting um well i can foil that I can also say x equals i, and then square both sides. x squared equals um, uh, negative 1. Well, i squared is equal to negative 1. Move this over, x squared plus 1. And so then, if I, if I insist that this um, it has a rational coefficients, I can now say, well, I have to have an x minus 2 and an x squared plus 1, and I can FOIL this mess out. This gives me an x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. I think. Let me know if I made a mistake. Um, so I like to make that caveat. And when I write problems, I s indicate that they have rational coefficients. Um, and so they travel with their buddy. This is negative four. This would become a plus i. This is two plus three i. This is um, negative four minus two i. I like to be sneaky and say something like um, five i minus three would correspond with the, the technically it's the imaginary part that changes. So those are conjugates, but it looked a little a little scary or weird because I switched the order around. Usually we see them in the form A plus B I. Oh, that says it right there. Okay. You know, I need a new pin. This one seems to have seen better days. Um, okay. The fundamental theorem of algebra tells us a polynomial of degree N has exactly N complex zeros when counting multiplicities. Okay. So with something like this, I see that it's got a bounce at negative one and it passes through three. So I can assume that this has the smallest the degree that this graph can be is two for here plus one more here. It has to be at least degree three. Um, and then what do they tell us? Um, it is known that, oh, okay. But then they gave us this imaginary zero. Um, and so um, the graph of the polynomial is shown in the figure above. It is known that this is a zero. If it has degree n, what is the least possible value of, of n? Well, we said it has a multiplicity of two here, a multiplicity of one, so two, one. And then this guy, they're telling us that it always travels with the buddy. Um, I think, had I written this problem, the graph of the polynomial function is shown in the figure above. I would have said its coefficients are rational. Okay, and so then we know that this has to travel with the buddy, so there's going to be two values there. So the least possible degree of um, n, uh, based on how I'm interpreting this question, is 5. Um, this could be 4, this could be 6, this could be 8, but it says the least possible. Um, good. Okay, so let's look at some polynomial inequalities. Where does f of x equal 0? Uh, it looks like negative 3 and negative 1 and 1, 2, 3. 
Where are we greater than zero? Well, um, we are greater than zero between negative three and negative one. And then again, from three to infinity. Where are we less than or equal to zero? So from negative infinity to negative three, but now we can use a hard bracket there. And then we pick it up again. We want it to be less than, so we want to be, we'll be between negative one and three. And we do include those because we can equal zero. Um, we were, when we write f of x, we were referring to the y value on the graph. Um, means that the graph f of x is greater than zero, means the graph of f of x is above the y-axis. And th this means it's below. When do we say f of x is less than zero? Okie dokie. That's fun. Okay, solving nonlinear polynomials, inequalities. <laughs> So let me try that again. Solving nonlinear inequalities, in particular polynomials. We'll do the sine diagram. Um, I think I've done a few of these on my stuff. Did I? I may have borrowed my problems from him. I think I wrote some of my own. I don't remember. Um, on here, I see a um, one thing, one distinction I make with the sine diagram is since it's just greater than and not equal to, I'm going to use dotted lines. So I have zeros at 3, at negative 1, and negative 4. I think I did do this problem. Here's negative 4. Here's negative one and here's three. The dotted is reminding me um, that I won't have those, like that I can't have that as an answer because I don't want to equal zero. Um, okay, coming back. If I So I'm gonna plug in zero and plug in zero. If I plug in zero, I get a negative and a positive and a positive, which gives me a negative, um, which is not gonna be greater than zero. So, um, which gives me a, it's a negative, which is false. Okay, so this, I could put an X. Sometimes I put a negative. Sometimes I put an F for false. I kind of, like, will do anything, you know, all three of those things. Let's plug in negative 2 because that's in this interval. I have a negative. I have a negative. I have a positive, which gives me a positive, which gives me a true statement. Yay! That makes me happy. Um, and then with this one, because I know that the multiplicities are all 1, it's the graph would pass through. So if this interval works, then we know that this one doesn't, and but that this one will. Um, I can plug in more values, but for the sake of a shorter video, I'm not going to. My final answer becomes negative, nope, it doesn't. It goes from negative 4 to negative 1, pick it up again, and go from 3 to infinity. Okay, on this one, I see zeros at negative 2 and 5. Notice because I can equal here, I did solid lines. Plug in 0. I get a positive squared and a negative, which gives me a negative, which would be less than, so that is true. Um, notice this one, we're going to have a bounce. So whatever happens, um, so it's a negative. If it's a negative on that side, it's a negative on this side. Let's verify. Let's plug in negative 3. If I plug in negative 3, I have a negative that I'm squaring, and a negative 3 makes this a negative. Negative squared is positive times another negative is a negative, so sure enough, this interval works also. Um, I think, since we can equal zero, that our easiest answer is just to go from negative infinity to five. I should check, check another one, but say six, that's a positive, that's a positive. It is not less than or equal to zero. Um, let's see, that's a 13 minute video. How much more did he have? Uh, he had a little bit more. Come back for the next video. I'll see you there. So like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if I make any mistakes. Be kind, though, you know. No need to be to put more rudeness into the world. I don't know why I'm lecturing you. All right, good luck. Go practice.